Ever wondered how commercial disputes and suits are handled in India? In the vast diverse landscape of Indian law, commercial disputes have their own unique place. Governed by a variety of laws, these disputes require a careful dance around legislation like the Commercial Courts Act of 2015 and the Civil Procedure Code. Each of these acts and codes provides a framework for how commercial disputes are to be handled, ensuring that proper procedure is followed and justice is served. But it's not just about knowing the laws, it's also about understanding the nature of the dispute. Is it a commercial dispute? If so, it needs to be filed in a commercial court. This is a critical first step in the process, setting the stage for everything that follows. From here, the journey through the Indian legal system begins. A journey that can be complex, challenging and time-consuming. So, let's unfold the process that takes place once a commercial dispute arises. Before jumping into the courtroom, have you heard about pre-institution mediation? This is an important step in the resolution of commercial disputes in India. It's like a pit stop before the race, a chance to resolve the dispute amicably without going to court. Here's how it works. If there's no need for urgent interim relief, the plaintiff should submit an application to the District Legal Services Authority or DLSA for short. The DLSA then swings into action, mediating between the disputing parties. The aim of the game is resolution, not litigation. The clock is ticking though. The DLSA must complete the mediation process within three months. But don't worry, if more time is needed, this can be extended by two months with the consent of both parties. It's all about giving peace a chance. Once the mediation process is complete, it's time to file the commercial suit. But we'll get to that in the next scene. Now comes the legal battle, filing the commercial suit. It's a crucial step, governed by the Civil Procedure Code of 1908, which found a new lease of life after amendments through the Commercial Courts Act 2015. This code sets the rules of the game, outlining the procedures and principles that courts and parties must follow. But what's the crux of filing a commercial suit? It's the statement of truth. This sworn statement vouches for the veracity of the claims made in the suit. It's like saying, I promise, everything I've stated here is true to the best of my knowledge and belief. It's not just a formality, but a solemn declaration that the court takes very seriously. Any false claims can lead to serious consequences. So, tread with caution. With the suit filed, the ball is now in the defendant's court. How does the defendant respond to the suit? To answer this, let's delve into the intricacies of the defendant's response. Once the commercial suit is filed, the ball lands in the defendant's court. Now it's their turn to present their side of the story. This is done through a document known as the written statement. The written statement is a critical piece of the legal puzzle as it forms the foundation of the defendant's defense. In this document, the defendant outlines their counter arguments, presenting their perspective on the issues raised in the plaint. The defendant doesn't simply deny the plaintiff's claims, Instead, they provide a detailed rebuttal, explaining why they believe the plaintiff's claims are unfounded. The written statement is a strategic tool, crafted to poke holes in the plaintiff's arguments and create doubt in the court's mind. Now, both parties have presented their standpoints. It's time for inspection. It's time to scrutinize the documents filed by both parties. This stage, known as the inspection of documents, is a critical part of the process. It's when each party gets to pour over the documents presented by their counterpart. Now, why is this so important, you ask? Well, it's simple. It allows both the plaintiff and the defendant to fully understand the evidence presented against them. This is the opportunity to verify the authenticity of the documents, to question any discrepancies, and to prepare a robust defense or prosecution. During this inspection, every piece of paper is examined meticulously. It's not just about reading the text on the page, but also about understanding the context, the subtext, and the implications of what's written. So, what happens after this painstaking process? Well, the stage is set for the next step in the procedure, which is the admission or denial of these documents. Once the documents are inspected, they are either admitted or denied. Admission or denial, the next crucial step in the process. 
After the documents have been inspected by both parties, each party then has the opportunity to either admit or deny the documents filed by the other party. This stage is pivotal in shaping the direction of the case. An admission of a document means that the party accepts the validity of the document and its contents. This can simplify matters as admitted documents are then considered as proven and there's no need to further substantiate their authenticity or the veracity of their contents during the trial. On the other hand, a denial of a document means the party challenges the authenticity or the relevance of the document. This can lead to further scrutiny and examination during the trial. It's important for each party to carefully consider which documents they admit or deny as this can significantly impact the subsequent proceedings. With the documents accepted or denied, the case moves to the management hearing. Next, we delve into the case management hearing. This stage is an essential part of the process aimed at ensuring the smooth and efficient progress of the case. It's not about determining who's right or wrong, but rather about organizing and scheduling the proceedings. The case management hearing is held under the guidance of the court, where the judge or the court officer oversees the process. It's here that the court maps out the course of the case, setting timelines for the completion of various stages, scheduling conferences, and determining deadlines. This systematic planning plays a significant role in avoiding unnecessary delays and in ensuring that both parties have ample opportunity to prepare and present their case. It's a meticulous process, but one that's crucial to the fair administration of justice. With the case streamlined, the trial begins. And this is where the real battle of arguments and counter-arguments takes place. It's time for the parties to present their cases. This stage, known as the trial, is where all the preparation comes to the fore. Each party, whether plaintiff or defendant, will present their case to the court. They'll use a combination of witness testimonies, documents and expert opinions to make their arguments. Witness testimonies can be particularly compelling. These are first-hand accounts that can provide a unique perspective on the dispute at hand. They can either corroborate or challenge the narratives presented by the parties involved. Documents, on the other hand, serve as tangible evidence. They are often crucial in establishing facts and could include emails, contracts, invoices or any other relevant paperwork. Expert opinions add another layer to the arguments. These professionals, who are specialists in their field, can provide an informed perspective on complex issues related to the dispute. With the arguments presented, judgment awaits. The fate of the case now lies in the hands of the judge or jury. The moment of truth. Judgment time. We've journeyed through the intricate labyrinth of a commercial suit and now the finale is upon us. The pronouncement of the judgment is a pivotal stage where the judge or jury, equipped with all the facts, arguments and evidence presented, reaches a verdict. This verdict determines the outcome of the case. It's akin to the final stroke of a painter's brush, sealing the fate of the canvas. The judge considers the weight of the evidence, the credibility of the witnesses and the strength of the arguments. From there, they craft a decision that reflects justice. But the judgment doesn't only declare the winner and the loser. It also outlines any potential damages awarded, setting the stage for the next phase of the process, the execution of the decree. The wheels of justice, once set in motion, churn steadily towards resolution. With the judgment pronounced, the execution of the decree follows. The final step, execution of the decree. This is where the rubber meets the road. Once the court has given its verdict in a commercial dispute, the decree and the orders of the court are put into action. This is a crucial phase as it ensures that justice, as prescribed by the court, is served. The execution process can involve forcible measures as outlined under Order 21 of the Code of Civil Procedure, 1908. This order provides a comprehensive procedure for executing the decree, ensuring that the court's orders are followed to the letter. This step is not just about enforcing the judgment, but also about reinforcing the rule of law. It is a testament to the robustness and effectiveness of India's legal system in resolving commercial disputes. And that, my friends, is how a commercial suit unfolds in India. Remember, every case is unique and may vary based on its circumstances.